Okay. Um, first of all, thanks so much for being here. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me by. So I think the, the big question is um, you're coming here to speak to CARP, mm -hmm. which is CARP used to being a, a pretty big, influential lobby group representing a demographic that votes. Mm -hmm. But I guess what CARP is used to are leaders who are baby boomers, kind of close in age, and suddenly – all the leaders, yourself included, are younger, very much younger. So I guess there's a bit of a, a worry that, uh, you know, your interests will lie with other issues. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, part of the reason why I'm here today is certainly to put to rest any of those types of concerns. I think it's a great thing that young people are getting involved and engaged, and as a result, federal parties will... Uh, we'll have to contemplate that as they put policies forward. But I believe that you can do those types of things without uh, disadvantaging any other demographic or any group. So my message today is to say uh, issues affecting retired people, issues affecting seniors, uh, will always be top of mind. Uh, it's, it's the demographic that, uh, that, that uh, is, it has always been most engaged um, when you look at the different age brackets. Um, and uh, our party has always had a strong record on that. So I want to listen. Uh, I'm still in the listening tour phase of my leadership. Uh, find out what are some of the issues that are out there. But certainly to send the signal that as we develop our policies, the Conservative Party will always have those issues, seniors' issues, retired issues of facing retired people at top of mind. Okay, well, it's even like you're, you're talking about retired people, and that's the old name of CARP, but... People are working longer, yes, both yeah. both out of necessity and uh, because they want to. Mm -hmm. um, I'm married to a guy. I'm not even allowed to say how old he is, and he has like the the most <laughs> challenging job of his life sure. now. And um, one of the issues that CARP uh, is going to take up has to do with mandatory RIF mm -hmm. withdrawals, where where people are forced to take out uh, a hunk of their retirement savings whether they need it or not and we're living so long that suddenly you can wake up at 95 and you have no money left yep and you know uh you're absolutely right i i think that there's a lot of uh, overlap between issues facing seniors and young people there are a lot of issues my uh, my parent uh, i lost my mother during the leadership campaign she spent the last Sorry few years of her that. thank you she spent the last couple of years of her life in and out of uh, you know palliative care and um, and assisted living centers but she was active and 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 with it and with a little bit of extra uh, home care she could have had a more productive life my father is still active uh, a lot of issues facing my generation in terms of providing support and care uh, but as well making sure that the resources are there so that uh, as people get older, they can still have active lifestyles and, and, and contribute. And to specifically to your point on the RIFs, I, I believe very f firmly in flexibility and choice for people. And uh, the, 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 we're, we're taking a look at some of the policies, but I am very sympathetic to the idea that uh, allowing people to have maximum control and flexibility for their personal finances is the best solution uh, for uh, exactly as you said. You know, people living into their 90s, uh, be, being very fit. My, my wife's grandmother is. Uh I won't say how old she is, but she's uh, very active, and, and you know she's worried about how long she can stay in her home based on the savings that, that, that she had. So at the end of the day, the government gets its money anyway. Uh, so I think we should look at ways of making uh, the, uh, the RIFs and other types of things more flexible for individuals. And uh, also in terms of health care, a federal role in health care, you mentioned home care, which is a big issue, but one of the things that happens, people are staying in their homes longer, but when they suddenly can't anymore that totally backs up the health system because suddenly they're taking up hospital beds when they should be in long-term care mm -hmm. but long-term care is not available oh I, I had so many times when i was in the hospital with my mom and and you know if she could have gone home you know she's, she had to stay in a bed waiting for a procedure to be done using up a, a hospital bed she would rather have been in her home but as soon as they as soon as she left she'd be treated as an outpatient and she'd go on some waiting list and and maybe take months to come back in and get the test or the procedure so i think there's a lot of issues around that that all levels of government you know the, the delivery is provincial the funding is shared with the federal government but we have to look at ways to get out of these silos and these boxes that we've created that at the end of the day d doesn't provide good service to the patients and costs taxpayers so much money in in in, uh, in waste so i think it's time that, that we had some of these frank discussions about those 
the rigidity of our system sometimes, and and home care is a big part of that. Finally, um, the big issue for CARP at the moment is pension reform, and Mm -hmm. it's putting pensioners at the head of the line of creditors as opposed to the back of the line. Um, Are you going to commit to do that if you win well i can i can tell you that it's that it's something that that uh, we're listening uh, right now again not to kind of bring in too many personal <laughs> sides of the story but my dad worked at the ottawa citizen he has a uh, a can west pension you know and and we know the trouble that's facing the news industry and there's a lot of he has a lot of anxiety we have a lot of conversations about uh about what 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 would happen if uh if if the worst ever came about i have a tremendous amount of sympathy for people who have worked their entire lives with a promise, with a, with an agreement that they th- they gave their labor, they gave their time, and part of that their money and their money and and part of that was that there would be their money waiting for them, and the contributions that were uh, agreed on uh, would be there at the end of the working life. And to tell someone who's 70, 72 that the rug gets pulled out from them, they don't have the ability to go back into the workforce and. Um, and make that up in many cases. So uh, I, you know, not in a position to make a, f- a commitment. I want to. I want to listen more about it. But it's something that I'm very uh, sympathetic to. I'm very sympathetic to, to what we're seeing now with Sears and and other types of large employers. And it, it, whether it's a small business too, you know, it, it doesn't really matter the scale of the company. Each individual is going through that hardship. We need to make sure that we have a, a regime in place to to protect people. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. Look forward to hearing you inside.